you could close your eyes and if you didn't know what you were listening to, you'd be like, is this someone released JB? The Human Music Recommendation Service. My name is Liam Flanagan and I'll be your musical guide, recommending you the best in music wherever and whenever it came from. You're currently watching our interview series where each month I interview a guest curator. These curators know music inside out and we'll be discussing top quality recommendations in depth. Now we're going to move on to the Gordon's War soundtrack, a black exploitation soundtrack from 1973. Some really interesting stuff I found about this one. For instance, one of the composers is Angelo Badalamentini. Yes, named as Andy Bedale, I believe, on this album. It was his first soundtrack that he worked on. And crazy enough, it's one of the funkiest soundtracks ever recorded but you've got him doing all these land collaborations and you would never think that he was part of a b-boy masterpiece if it had been the other way around if i'd known it was him and then i and i had the album you know i'd just be like these two things don't make sense <laughs> i'm a huge um, fan of twin peaks and this has yep. nothing to do with twin, <laughs> twin peaks yeah, the music in all of Lynch's films are uh, all of his music is just amazing, and he's done tons of uh, pictures. But like, you come back to this 1973 black exploitation soundtrack from a movie starring Paul Winfield about some Vietnam vets going back to Harlem to clean up the streets. It just you're right; it just it, it doesn't seem like it's the same person. But uh, the record itself has New Birth on it, Barbara Mason on it. It's a compilation. Um, but they just happened to do most of the tracks on it. The group that he was in is called Badder Than Evil. Which is... Yeah, absolutely. And it's rumored that Bernard Purdy was playing drums on that album. Yeah, and a guy called Wilbur Bascom. Wilbur Bascom, yes. Super famous session musician. Uh, played on a yeah. ton of great records. So I don't know if there's any truth to that, but it is rumored that both of them planned it, which would make sense because... Those two guys played together all the time in a lot of different albums. The song that I chose for you, Hot Wheels, is definitely one that when you play at a b-boy jam, people are going off on, on this song. Yeah, I could see that. These black exploitation soundtracks are like the intersection where my love of movie soundtracks and my love of funk and soul music just collide. And it's like... You gotta have every single funk uh, black exploitation soundtrack ever made. I'm the same. I when I was 18, I discovered Shaft. And yes, that was it. It was like the what this more I need to find all of this. Unfortunately, yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. still probably a good 10 to 12 soundtracks are where I'd like to be at. But yeah, I've probably got 15. I got a massive soundtrack collection that is not just funk. It's I got everything. I got any soundtrack. I'm obsessed with soundtracks. There's something very evocative about soundtrack. It's so subtle. I think it's almost like the trickiest. I'm not saying it's not difficult to write pop songs, but it's like difficult to write pop right. songs. And it's hard. Right. I think doing a soundtrack is difficult as well because you're trying to express a lot, of, often trying to express a lot of stuff in a small window of time you're not supposed to be the main event you're the music that's right you're supposed to be second playing second fiddle to the action so whether you're funk banger like hot wheels or it's right or yes it's the, or it's the theme to to win peaks it's an art there's an art the real art to it yep it's fantastic I, yeah i this album in particular just you don't hear too much about it you don't hear too much about the movie either gordon's war yeah. So I just thought it was one that, that just needed to get a little it love. Some shine. The next selection, I don't know if this needs more shine, but we're going to give it some anyway, because it's my favorite from the Bellic album, Standing on the Verge of Getting It On from Night. Yes. I'm glad to hear that, that too. <laughs> Yeah, I was like really tough when I saw that because so many people picked Maggot Brain 
or they pick one nation under a groove. And I do love both mm -hmm. of those albums. Oh, absolutely. But this one, I don't know whether it's me being a guitarist. because That is the sole reason I picked this album. But I'm not that type of guitarist at all. <laughs> but I love Ed, Eddie Hazel. This is his masterpiece. Incredible stuff. Yeah, it's like everyone does talk about Maggot Brain, and that's fine. It is one of the most beautiful, emotional, mm -hmm. phenomenal songs and guitar solos ever. It's like you said, I chose this album because... Uh, to me, it was Eddie Hazel's time to shine. He's co-writer of every song on the album. I think he lists, yeah, like his mom or somebody as the writer. But oh yeah, there's, you can yeah, I read, there's lots of legal issues with him and Clinton. So he, it's under a different name. I, I forget who it was exactly, but uh, you're right. I think it was his mom. I didn't make. I think it was his mom. This was after like he left the band, and this is the I believe the first album when he was back with yeah. again with the band, and he shines now everyone shines on the, the whole funkadella group absolutely absurd amount of talent eddie hazel just from the first song red hot mama all the way to the end next level it, guitar riffs all the way. next level guitar playing to put him in the same talk as Jimi hendrix yes is okay in my mind sometimes listening to the way he plays and the way that he took his influence from jimmy and made it his own thing certainly I, I agree with that i would say there's definitely a lot of crossover in that they're both these guitarists that can play these incredible riffs that that really work on a, a quite a visceral level like you know that they can but then you've got i'll stay and i often don't like the ballads on the funk record i think you said you watch jay jay's and it just goes and goes that album is amazing Accounts are awesome. And I don't mind ballads, like, again, but some people just do them better than others. Yep. And he just plays that. Yep. He can play that sensitive stuff, that really emotive stuff as well, as he proved on Maggot Brain, which is right. the, the almost the whole spectrum of human emotion in in one track. And, and here yeah, we, that, get, we, we get more like snapshots of, of human emotion. Yep, little life. snippets of his brilliance. There's always that story where they were opening for Vanilla Fudge and they lost all their stereo equipment. So Vanilla Fudge was like, you can use ours. And meanwhile, Vanilla Fudge is playing on these massive speakers that they that Funkadelic had never played on before. Right. And they said, as soon as they heard that loud, that sound, that is what we were looking that's for. That's what we're going right? to do. That, that's what we're going to do. I also and think um, Funkadelic are kind of the ultimate representation of, of everything that came before them in Detroit and everything that came after them. They link it all together. They are like the Stooges. They are like, they are like yeah. Motown. But then they are also like what comes next, electro and techno. Mm -hmm. Every, everything can be linked to them. Yeah. How great would it have been to see like Stooges MC5 Funkadelic show? Like that would have been insane. <laughs> that's the circuit they were on when they first started. Like that's who yeah. they were trying to appeal to, the same crowd. Just in George Clinton knowing... With Funkadelic, I'm going to do this thing, and I could be dirty and filthy and crazy. And then with Parliament, is more of his crossover act. We talk about Parliament and the differences between Parliament and Funkadelic in that episode. They are a lot, they are soft, they are a soft and more commercial outfit, but that's not to knock them at all. No, I love Parliament. Huge they're, they're, Parliament. It's man. two sides of the same coin. That brings us to uh, your next selection, which is a more recent one, but from an artist who was very much around during the original era of funk and soul music. So it's Marva Whitney's I Am What I Am from 2006. And she was backed on this album by a Japanese funk group called Osaka Mon Mon Monorail. Osaka Monorail. Yes, they so that band has been around in the Japanese funk scene, um, which there's a pretty big Japanese funk scene, funk scene since yeah. the mid 90s and had released a couple records, a couple of 45s some singles. And I know there was a DJ, I forget his name. And he knew Marva Whitney he said, you got to listen to this band or do you want to make a record? And she wasn't really into it, but she heard Osaka Monorail. 
and thought DJ this has to be the JB's. This has to be the JB's playing from 1968. Is what she thought because that's it's, the it's sound that Osaka Monero has. They looked at James Brown and the JB's and said, "We're gonna just do that and do it as perfect as we can." So when Marva heard it, and she hadn't released an album since a studio album since 69, which was It's My Thing, which is a right. super funky, heavy, heavily sampled record. So they came together and created this record, which not only showcases the band, but you get Marva, who's soul sister number one, like one of the funkiest yeah, that's, that's female cool, performers that. of all time. I, when I saw it coming out, I'd already been a fan of Osaka Monero. And then yeah, I'm like, with Marva Whitney, I was just like, that's it. That's And this record is... From top to bottom, I love every song on this record. It showcases the funk. There's some slower gospel songs on here. There's some instrumental, just funk songs. Marva gets to showcase you know, her voice, and it's just an amazing album. Like you say, she had this career in the late 60s as the soul sister. She sang in the JBs, but she was also, she was also recording for King under James Brown's guidance. Then she ends up getting sampled a lot in the late 80s and the early 90s with, with hip-hop coming through. So people like the 45 King sampled her on 900 Number. And then the James Brown's Funky People compilations come out. So there is this increased interest in his alumni. So, so yeah, in some ways, if you don't know that, it seems like this is a really random album. Why are these Japanese dudes working with this? soul singer who hasn't put an album for donkey's years and yet it does make a lot of sense because there was a there was this a, a build up happening uh and a, and a re the, yeah that, that interest in james brown's music's never really died i think it's, the thing that i've always i've noticed in recent years with japanese and korean bands uh, in particular it doesn't seem to matter what genre they're from they just, they're so tight. Their rhythm mm -hmm. sections and their production, like everything is just on. Whether it's, on point. I listen to a lot of alt rock and hardcore punk, mm -hmm. just like their Western contemporaries are just nothing compared to them. Just like, why would I listen to yeah. all the, like these guys are just like they're a huge smack in the face. And that's what I come for. I've come for a smack in the face. I've right. got the best smack in the face possible. And I'd say this is a similar thing but from a funk perspective, it's like they're so tight, they're so in the pocket. Yep. They, yep. you again, you could close your eyes, and if you didn't know what you were listening to, you'd be like, Is this someone released JB? And that's the ultimate reason why Marva they got Marva to come out of retirement and record an album is because she was like, This band, yeah, I feel right. this band. <laughs> and sadly, we lost her. I think that was her last studio album, and just what a, just what a wonderful, beautiful album to. to and her career on it. Thank you all for watching this video. If you want to support Eclectic Selections and join our community, there are various ways that you can do that. Number one, you can like, comment, and subscribe right here on YouTube. This is this helps our video get noticed by the YouTube algorithm, and it helps other music lovers like you find great music. You can two follow us over on Twitter. Here you'll get the latest news, and you'll get extra recommendations. To be able to keep up to date with everything eclectic selections, you can join our Ko fi, which is just like Patreon, so you can support us and you'll get access to extra content like private playlists, extra video recommendations from our guests, all that good stuff. And there's more coming in the future. Join our Discord community where you can chat with other music lovers and myself about music and other subjects too. All the links for all of that down in the description in our link tree. Thanks again for watching and until next Thursday, keep it eclectic.